Rolling. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Chidi Bube Oke Omoka. I am 18 years old and I'm from Imo State, but well, I live in Abuja. I'm a CMD student, that's Communications and Multimedia Design. So I came to Yola, you know, mainly because of school, because, you know, American University of Nigeria is in Yola. So I'm here for educational purposes and, um, you know, integrating in a new environment, um, meeting new people. Adapting to a new environment hasn't been always hard for me, but I think this time is because the amount of people were like much, very much, you know, more than a normal environment, normal secondary school, primary school environments. Yeah, it really took a bit of time, but then it wasn't hard at all. So being in AUN, um, it's actually a different experience. I actually imagine how it would have been if I didn't end up here because there's a lot of opportunities and you're open to a lot of new things. I mean, I'm a CMD student and I haven't even started my core CMD courses yet, but I've done so much. I've been able to, you know, find my feet into many other things like photography and modeling. And um, the liberal arts philosophy exposes me to different things. Like, you know, does this, you don't have to have this um, major requirement to uh, pursue some kind of career. Like, I know of a senior in my secondary school who I met here that's doing the same CMD course with me. And uh, I was thinking, oh, but I'm in art class and he was in science class and he told me that. No, it, it doesn't really matter that way. Well, you just need to, you know, get a good grades from secondary school and then come here. So, yeah, that's that's um, about the liberal arts. And, you know, they are, you are not limited to anything. Of course, you have your core, your core requirements for, you know, your various courses, but you are still not limited to a bunch of things unlike other institutions. So, the cafeteria here, Obviously, it's going to be different from high school because you have choices. Believe me, um, thinking about thinking about it, going back, this is yeah, it's still this year. I remember we go to our refectory. That's what we used to call it there. Go to our refectory every day. No matter how small the food is, you manage it, or else if that's if you have a deal with someone and you're going to get an extra piece of food. But here you have choices, there you don't. In university you have choices. And if you do not want to eat well, you can just go and buy something from the coffee shop or get something and grab and go or even order food. But yeah, back in secondary school it wasn't that way. So that's the difference. And yeah, the options are actually quite good, you know. I didn't imagine I would be coming to school and I would be eating chicken every day. I mean, I got tired of chicken. And then there was no chicken, I was like, ah, why? So that's how, yeah, that's how it is. Now, my favorite food is um, salad. Yeah, it's a different kind of salad. I don't really know what kind of salad it is. It's just that it's very rare. So, um, it means so much to me because, you know, there's this originality. Nothing is cooked. Nothing is Boiled, nothing is fried, nothing is under fire, everything is just the way it comes and you know it's just prepared so everything is eating raw and you know you're getting all the vitamins and your body is absorbing everything. The person that prepares it best in my family is my dad because you know, he was the first person to prepare it. I don't know where he got that recipe from but he travels a lot and you know, we all seem to like it so yeah after him it's me because I don't know, there's this joke he's always making about not telling my mom the recipe so that she would not use it to blackmail him. So I picked it up from here. He taught me how to make it. So I make it for the family most times as well. Because it's not it's not something you eat alone though. The only person that eats it alone most times is my mom because you know they take it, they package it to her, package it for her to take it to the office, but when it's to be eaten, tell my dad, buy everything, make it, and the whole family will eat it. So, um, 
it, this salad now, it's not in school. It's not, like I said, it's very rare. So, you see, even if you're going to find that kind of thing around here, there will be a lot of things missing. Now, these salad people are familiar with either fruit salad or coleslaw, but this particular kind of salad, you don't find it. You really find it. And then my dad is always boasting about how, oh, a plate of this salad, if you're going to any restaurant in Abuja, it's about 10,000 naira. I'm like, okay. Okay, yes, nutrients. So, yeah, that's it. Well, um, my family also, well, we eat a lot of other, a bunch of other foreign, you know, continental dishes. Like, my dad cooks with wine sometimes, and like, you know. There, I think there was a time he soaked pork in wine and then spiced it and grilled it. And it actually tasted nice, you know, but I, I didn't really think I'd like it until I tasted it. Then, you know, after that first day, the remaining, they kept it for themselves and that their parents. It's not for us. So, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> the impact of this globally connected oral history project, supported by Global Liberal Arts, it has, you know, made me to realize that um, a lot of people are, like, over, over time, I am a privileged person, and you know, a lot of people don't have this opportunity that I have. I mean, even people in other universities wish they were here, even though I'm not satisfied now, because, you know, my human beings are always going to find faults in everything, but it is actually a very, very nice place to study, and yeah, there's so many opportunities, and this particular project has actually helped me realize that. It has helped me realize that I'm privileged, and you know, there are also other people out there that are looking for this privilege. And, you know, um, people move to different places for different reasons. Like, some, some moved to Yola because of job opportunities. Others didn't have any choice. You know, their family were moving, so they had to come. Like, or else they would leave here at home and all that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, <coughs> interviewing the... Interviewing Mr. Thomas on his yeah, local meal, it was actually kind of funny because you know he kept we we're talking normally, and then when he just got to that existing soup and he was just mentioning power, like it started from power from that point and ended with power. All I kept saying was power, 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 power soup. When you give it to your husband, he has power. The person speaking has power. Power, power, power to the home, power to the, you know, power is like, power, power, everything, a PDP thing. <laughs> so, yeah, well, um, well, I really enjoyed the program, yes, and I, I hope, well, this will encourage um, other people to come to AEN, really. Come to AEN, AEN is a nice place, though it's hot, but there are air conditioners in every class, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, please come to. American University of Nigeria, you are. Thank you very much. I was getting That was very interesting, actually. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah, the uh, liberal arts program, yeah. Here in AUN, I am a CMD major, like, uh, like I've said before. And um, I'm in the writing class. And, you know, our connecting course now centers on food. So we're connecting with India and Ecuador. Now we learned the most important food in Ecuador was coconut because we saw a video where they used the coconut to prepare different things, coconut oil and you know different meals. Now we had this part of the program where we sent our recipes to each other and you know, I had to prepare an Ecuadorian dish. Well, it didn't turn out quite well, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, but I couldn't, you know, finish it up. Well, the thing is, um, this part of the connecting course, yes, like I've said before, is, is where you find out that you are not limited to one aspect of things. You know, I wouldn't, I, did, I wouldn't expect to do this kind of thing in a writing class. When I hear writing, what comes to my mind is 
essays, essays, every Monday and Wednesday essay, you know. But um, through this, <coughs> you know, this um, connection course, I've actually seen that the this is the liberal, this is where the, the liberal arts starts to, you know, open up and uh, students exposed to different things. Like, like now I, I know how to prepare shrimp cheviche. And even though I don't, even though I will not be able to, you know, remember everything, I can still go back because, yeah, it's, it's recorded somewhere. So that's, that's it. It's, it's, uh, it's an opportunity, actually, you know, to be open to different things, different ideas, different schools of thought. And they also, in India, in Ecuador, you know, they cook jollof rice and, you know, Nigerians, you know, cherish our jollof and uh, praise it everywhere. Well, we're going global and things like that. So yeah, um, the um, the liberal arts part of it's, it's it's not only limited to writing class. You see, I I also have an example in my entrepreneurship class where we participated in this uh, a health prize competition. It was actually a live competition. You know, it's. It's, it's very different from an academic competition where you are just doing it for marks. I mean, marks were included, but we were actually competing for something and there were people who, who um, went on, you know, from where we had rounds and some people qualified to represent school in Abuja. Although the um, prize goes to them because it's their business. That's, and, and it's of a high practical nature. You know, it's not, it's not like, it's not always theoretical. Like, there are always workshops that are given to you and everything is practical. So, it's, it's, uh, it's a very, very nice opportunity and it's very cherished. So, I, I actually advise that um, any, anyone that really needs a very practical experience, yeah, you can try AUN for a first choice. I would like to ask you now about some of the skills you've learned being, um, you know, through the writing class, through the oral history project. What are some of the specific skills you can say, oh, this, I learned this one, you know, I got better at this one, and I'm definitely going to improve on the other ones, you know? <coughs> um, the skills I learned, or the skills I acquired in my writing class. Well, first of all, you know, in secondary school, the way we write is actually quite tense. First of all, your thought is to achieve 450 words. If you don't have 450 words, you're never going to fail. But then, um, I actually didn't look at it that way because what I discovered was that, you know, the, um, the more you practice, the, the better you get. And as, as you have your mind focused on a particular idea, more things keep coming, and if you can build them up in a very, you know, very nice way, if it's well constructed, you don't need to worry about your number of words. Now, what you need to really focus on is your the idea you're trying to paint out, and you learn different kinds of writing and how to put them all in one essay. Like um, <clears throat> one thing, one thing I'm always going to tell myself while I'm writing now is. You know, to so put yourself in the place of the reader. I mean, I never thought of that till this writing class. I mean, my instructor was always saying, put yourself in the place of the reader. Don't assume the reader knows this because you are the one writing that you know this. So that's one thing I've improved. And also interviewing, I've never interviewed anyone before, really. And, you know, I just felt, well, it's just an interview and um, it's, it's going to be okay. And um, you know, the first time I I found myself on an interview, it was actually an online interview with the students in Ecuador. They interviewed us and expected us to interview them. So when they said that, I thought, oh God, I'm in trouble. So I started, you know, to um, <laughs> yeah, to make make up questions very quickly. And well, it was a nice experience, but you know, with time, I got better because um, from there we also had more interviews. So um, responding to interviews and you know, interviewing people is a skill I have acquired in addition to improving my writing. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Rolling. Hello, my name is Kendi Adibi. I'm from Lagos and I'm an NES major. It's nice to be here. Um, I ended up in Yola because of education. I'm an EUN student and it's fun to be here. It's a nice environment, although it's a bit hot. But I do enjoy meeting new people and I enjoy, I have enjoyed Yola so far. Um, AUN is pretty fun, I guess, as fun as university is. Um, I, the liberal arts education is something I'm not used to. My school wasn't really liberal, artsy, whatever phrase it is. It was basically teaching, it was basically us being taught. But it's fun. I get moved out of my comfort zone. I have a better understanding of my courses. I think I'm being a better student than I was in high school. Cafeteria, I don't go to cafeteria a lot. But it's not the same as high school. I can, like, obviously, it's not the same as high school. The arrangement, the old swipe thing, it's unorthodox and it's a better way of meals working in school. Yes, um, my favorite food is jollof rice, as plain as that can sound. The reason why I like it is because it's jollof rice. It's awesome. It has different flavors. It's easily make. It's easily made, and it has. There are different condiments you could add to the food. When it comes to cooking the food, who is the best in my family? Who is the best? I think it's my grandmother, but I'd never like to admit that on camera because it's my grandmother because she. I guess she has more experience when it comes to making the food. She just has, like when she makes the food, there's a specific taste you get from the food. It's, it feels better. The impact. The oral history project was really fun. Um, I'm, I'm sure that I'm going to enjoy it. I hope this doesn't bite me in the ass later, but. Can I see that what did you say? Sorry, say that again. Yes. The oral history thing? Um, yeah. What did you say? You're going to enjoy it? Yes. No, but it's, that's what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. So, like. I, why, why are you are going to enjoy it as if you, well, it's already in progress? So, what are your thoughts about it? You know, so far, I'm mean, enjoying the thing. Like, it's pretty fun being an interview. This is not my first time being interviewed. But, like, it's pretty fun. I'm not nervous at all. What is. Okay, just can you feel free. Again, please? Can you just um, take that again? Feel free, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Drop your yeah. lines. Anything that is not needed will be edited out. Uh, Thank you. So. Yeah, you know, okay, now you've been, you've been part of this oral history project. You know, what are your thoughts about it? What have you learned from it, being, you know, a participant? What have you learned about the others? You know, can you connect it maybe to the liberal arts curriculum here at AUN, you know, that exposes you to different things, different disciplines and all that? And would you recommend it, you know, the connection program for, you know, subsequent semesters? If I were to recommend this oral history project, it would be a yes, because it teaches people, um, it teaches people how to be in front of a camera. It teaches them what goes on, because there are some times that you would be taken out of your classroom and you have to implement real life, you have to implement real life tactics in what you learn in class. So it's fun and from what I've, from what I've had so far, I'm enjoying the interview. I'm able to speak better about things and stuff that I wouldn't be able to speak usually about. I would recommend this subsequently for other semesters simply because it would affect other students in other different ways. And I would love to see that. What a, my peers are pretty, they're pretty, pretty good. Everybody is fun. People are, people are, people have special, um, unique skills. I don't talk to a lot of them outside of school, outside of class, but the ones I do, I enjoy their company, which is fun. Um, there are meals I don't know. I don't know which meals I would like prepared cooking. But if I had the chance, I would probably try something from Evo. I've never had Evo meals before. Any takeaway from the project? Yes, any takeaway from the project. The interview has been has been fun. 
I did enjoy talking about the I did enjoy talking about certain um, factors. It's been it's put me out of my comfort zone. Even though this is not my first time being interviewed, it's my first time ever having an ever having to speak in front of a camera like this. So it's fun.